Hello everyone, now let us discuss about CPT coding guidelines for radiology, especially diagnostic radiology for vascular procedures. In that, we will be discussing about veins and lymphatics. So, let us first of all discuss brief anatomy of veins, the veins of systemic circulation. We know that arteries distribute blood from heart to various parts of the body and veins drain blood away from the various parts of the body and return the blood to heart. Arteries distribute the blood whereas veins drain the blood away from various parts of the body and return it to heart. In general, arteries are deep, veins may be superficial or deep. Superficial veins are located just beneath the skin and cannot can be easily seen. They are the sites for withdrawing blood and giving injections. Arteries are usually deep and veins may be superficial or deep. Superficial veins are located just beneath the skin and can be easily seen and they are the sites for withdrawing blood and giving injections. So let us discuss the three major systemic veins. The three major systemic veins are coronary sinus, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Now let us discuss about coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is the main vein of the heart. The main vein of heart is coronary sinus. It receives almost all venous blood from myocardium. All tissues of heart, they drain into coronary sinus. It is located in coronary sulcus on posterior aspect of heart and opens into right atrium between the orifice of inferior vena cava and tricuspid valve. The wide venous channel, coronary sinus is a wide venous channel into which three veins drain. The first is great cardiac vein, which is from the anterior interverticular sulcus into its left. Next is middle cardiac vein from the posterior interventricular sulcus and the next is small cardiac vein into its right end. And several anterior cardiac veins, they drain directly into right atrium. So the major vein or main vein of heart is coronary sinus. It is located in the coronary sulcus. Now coming to superior vena cava, it empties its blood into superior part of right atrium. Superior vena cava empties its blood into superior part of right atrium. It begins posterior to the first coastal cartilage by union of right and left branchiocephalic veins and ends at the level of right coastal cartilage where it enters the right atrium. And the regions that are drained are head, neck, upper limbs and thorax. These regions, they empty its blood in the superior vena cava and this superior vena cava empties its blood into superior part of right atrium. Now coming to inferior vena cava, it is the largest vein of body. So what is the largest vein of body? That is inferior vena cava. It begins anterior to fifth lumbar vertebrae by union of common iliac veins ascend behind the peritoneum to the right of midline, pierces caval opening of diaphragm at the level of 8th thoracic vertebrae and enters the inferior part of right atrium. Inferior vena cava empties its blood into inferior part of right atrium and the regions that are drained are abdomen, pelvis and lower limbs. So, inferior vena cava is the largest vein of the body. The regions drained are abdomen, pelvis and lower limbs. One more important clinical significant point is the inferior vena cava is commonly compressed during the later stages of pregnancy by the enlarging uterus. This leads to production of edema of ankles and feet and temporary ven varicose veins in pregnant women. Because of the compression of inferior vena cava during the later stages of the pregnancy leads to edema of ankles and feet and temporary varicose veins. Now let us discuss about lymphatic system. The lymphatic system assists in circulating body fluids and help defend the body against disease causing agents. 
the most components of blood we all know that most components of the blood plasma they filter through blood capillary walls to form interstitial fluid after the interstitial fluid passes into lymphatic vessels it is called as lymph this is important point after the interstitial fluid it passes into lymphatic vessels it is called as lymph and the major difference between interstitial fluid and lymph is the location the interstitial fluid is found between the cells whereas lymph is found in lymphatic vessels and lymphatic tissue the order of hierarchy is the lymph passes from lymphatic capillaries into lymphatic vessels and from lymphatic vessels it flows from lymph nodes lymph nodes are nothing but encapsulated bean shaped organs consisting of masses of b cells and t cells and as the lymphatic vessels they exit the lymph nodes in a particular region of the body they unite to form lymph trunks lymph vessels after they exit lymphatic nodes or lymph nodes they form lymph trunks lymph passes from lymph trunks into main channels two main channels thoracic left lymphatic duct and right lymphatic duct now let us discuss about various lymph trunks there are five lymph trunks the first one is lumbar it drains lymph from lower limbs wall and viscera of pelvis kidneys the adrenal glands and abdominal wall the next is intestinal trunk intestinal lymphatic trunk it drains lymph from stomach intestine pancreas spleen and part of liver the next is bronco mediastinal trunk it drains the lymph from thoracic wall lung and heart the next is subclavian lymph trunk it drains lymph from upper limbs the next is jugular trunk it drains the lymph from head and neck so these are the major lymphatic trunks and these lymphatic trunks they drain lymph into two channels the lymph trunks they drain into two main channels which are called as lymphatic ducts the major lymphatic duct is thoracic lymphatic duct or left lymphatic duct the next is right lymphatic duct thoracic left lymphatic duct is the main duct to return lymph to blood it receives the lymph from right and left lumbar trunks intestinal trunk left jugular left subclavian and left bronco mediastinal trunks that is it receives the lymph from left side of head neck chest left upper limb entire body inferior to ribs hence this is the main lymphatic duct the next is right lymphatic duct it receives lymph from right jugular right subclavian right bronchios mediastinal trunks that is it receives lymph from right upper side of the body now let us discuss about the cpt guidelines for venography venography is nothing but an x ray exam that is performed to examine the veins of the body especially that of legs so the diagnostic venography cpt is not reportable in certain cases what are they the diagnostic venography which is nothing but radiological supervision and interpretation codes should not be used with interventional procedures diagnostic venography codes should not be used for interventional procedures with interventional procedures for contrast injections venography road mapping and or or fluoroscopic guidance for the interventions vessel measurement post angioplasty stunt venography as this work is captured in the radiological and interpretation code itself unless and until they are mentioned diagnostic venography codes should not be used along with interventional procedures for these following procedures for contrast injections for road mapping for fluoroscopic guidance of the interventions for 
vessel measurement for post angioplasty and for stunt venography etc now let us discuss the scenarios where diagnostic venography is reportable along with interventional procedures the diagnostic venography performed at the time of an interventional procedure is separately reportable if no prior catheter based venographic study no prior catheter based venographic study is available and a full diagnostic study is performed and this venography leads to decision to intervene and the decision to intervene is based on the diagnostic study first scenario is no prior catheter based venography study is available even in such cases also diagnostic venography is reported along with interventional procedure no prior catheter based venographic study is available and a full diagnostic study is performed and the decision to intervene is based on this diagnostic study in this case diagnostic venography is separately reportable along with interventional procedure and second case a prior study is available but as documented in the medical medical record if the patient condition with respect to clinical indication has changed since the previous study even though prior study is available if the patient condition with respect to clinical indication has changed even in such case diagnostic venography is reportable along with interventional procedure and if there is inadequate visualization of anatomy or pathology in the previous report then also diagnostic venography is reportable along with interventional procedure third case is there is a clinical change during the procedure that requires a new evaluation outside the target area of intervention so even though if a previous study is available if the patient condition has changed and if there is inadequate visualization of the anatomy and there is a clinical change during the procedure that requires a new evaluation outside the target area of intervention in all these cases even though previous study is available diagnostic venography along with interventional procedure is reportable and the diagnostic venography performed at a separate session from an interventional procedure is separately reported and diagnostic venography performed at the time of an interventional procedure is not separately reportable if it is specifically included in the interventional code description as we have discussed earlier usually you don't code diagnostic venography with interventional procedures if it is specifically included in the interventional code descriptor now let us discuss about various codes or cpts the first cpt is 75801 it deals with lymphangiography lymphangiography is an x-ray examination of vessels of lymph nodes or lymphatic vessels 70801 is lymphangiography extremity only unilateral radiological supervision and interpretation next is 75803 it deals with lymphangiography extremity only bilateral radiological supervision and interpretation the next is 75805 lymphangiography pelvic or abdomen unilateral the next is 75807 lymphangiography pelvic or abdomen abdomen bilateral in all these cases radiological supervision and interpretation is present 75805 is lymphangiography pelvic or abdomen unilateral whereas 75807 is lymphangiography pelvic or abdomen bilateral the next code is 75809 shuntogram for investigation for previously placed indwelling non vascular shunt for example leaving shunt ventriculo peritoneal shunt indwelling infusion pump etc 
radiological supervision and interpretation. The next code is 75810. Splenoportography, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75820. Venography, extremity, unilateral, radiological supervision and interpretation. Venography is nothing but X-ray study of veins. The next is 85822. Venography extremity bilateral. The next is 75825. Venography cavel inferior with serilography. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75827. Venography cavel superior with serilography. Serilography is nothing but serial images of X-ray are taken in a series. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75831 which is nothing but penography, renal, unilateral, selective, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75833. Penography, renal, bilateral, selective, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next code is 75840, venography adrenal unilateral. The next code is 75842, venography adrenal bilateral. The next is 75860, venography venous sinus. Example, petrocell and inferior sagittal or jugular catheter, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75870, venography superior sagittal sinus. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75872. Venography epidural. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75880. Venography orbital. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75885. Percutaneous transhepatic portography. With hemodynamic evaluation. Radiological supervision and interpretation. The next is 75887 percutaneous transhepatic portography without hemodynamic evaluation, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next code is 75889 which is nothing but hepatic venography wedged or free with hemodynamic evaluation, radiological supervision and interpretation. The next code is 75891. Hepatic venography wedged or free without hemodynamic evaluation. The next is 75893. Venous sampling through catheter with or without angiography. For example, parathyroid hormone or renin. Radiological supervision and interpretation. Now let us discuss an example. A 52-year-old female is sent to radiology for lymphangiography of both arms. Patient has swelling in both arms which is suspected to be lymphangitis and she has a history of breast cancer having double mastectomy. What CPT codes are to be reported in this scenario? Lymphangiography of both arms that is nothing but bilateral. So the appropriate code is 75803. Lymphangiography extremity only bilateral radiological supervision and interpretation. By this we complete the diagnostic radiology of vascular procedures especially veins and lymphatics. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.